what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we're back with a new video. Today, I'm excited. I'm here with my pastor again. Um, pastor Silas, please. Yeah, my name is Pastor Silas and I'm here with the Perseverance. Yeah. If you guys, uh, I should bring a Muslim when doing my video next time. Um, but I only have one Muslim friend and he's not around. So I brought my pastor over again to review some videos with me that I've checked out. Some of them I've checked out, but some I've not checked out. This is going to be his first time. I've actually checked out this video, the Prophet on Judgment Day. So let's give this a try. You know how to do it? Let's talk to us right now. Yes, more. Let's get into this video. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, on the day of judgment, you will reach a position of misery. People will be miserable. People will, some of them will be saddened. People would have given up hope in some ways. And then the Prophet wasallam said the long hadith. The people will gather each other. And they will begin to question what's going to happen to us. And so they will remember prophets let's go to the prophets let's ask them let's come to them and ask them to intercede for us so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can begin the judgment the hisab the accountability Prophet said in this life I had a dua and this dua I kept it Whereas every other prophet was given their dua which they asked for. As for my dua which I kept specific for me was that, Oh Allah, save my ummah on the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Behold, your Lord may raise you a beautiful raising on the day of judgment. What is that? It is the raising of the intercession. And this is the way it will go. He said, the people will go to Adam alayhi salam. And they will say to him, Ya Adam, Anta Abu al-Bashar. You are the father of all mankind. You are our father. Allah created you with his hands. Please intercede for us on this day. And then Adam alayhi salam will say, Ilaykum anni, ilaykum anni. Go away from me. Please go away from me. Inni akhafu mithla alladhi takhafu. I fear the same thing you are fearing. Inni asaytu Rabbi. I disobeyed my Lord once. Inna Rabbi qad ghadiba ghadaban lam yaghdab mithlahu qad. Today my Lord is in a state of anger which he has never been angry like this before. Go to the one who is after me. So we go to Nuh alayhi salam. And we say, Ya Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you. You are the second father of mankind. Intercede for us for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin the judgment. And then Nuh alayhi salam will say the same thing. Ilaykum anni, ilaykum anni. Go away from me, go away from me. I fear the same thing you are fearing. I made my dua upon my people. My Lord is angry in a state where he has never been angry like this before. Go to the one after me, go to the one after me. So then we go to the next prophets. Till we reach Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Ibrahim alayhi salam on that day would also respond in the same way. Go to the one after me. We keep going from prophet to prophet. This is all the Muslims and all the disbelievers, everyone. So then we go finally to Musa alayhi salam. And Musa alayhi salam responds in the same way. He said, then we go to Isa alayhi salam. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, responds in the same way. And he adds, the people took me as a God. Therefore, today I am not qualified to face my Lord. How am I supposed to face him? I've got an answer to this. I've got something I have to answer to. The people took me as a God. Go to the one after me. I am not qualified for it. Finally, 
we reached Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, this is what I have been favored with on that day, that I will be given an intercession for you people. And the only intercession I'll be given for is for my ummah, for only for my nation who followed me. As for the rest of the nations, they will have to go behind their prophets, behind their imams. And everyone else who was disbeliever will go behind whoever they used to follow. So whoever their authority was, the angels will say, go to whoever you used to follow. Our Rasul Sallallahu says, when the people come to me and they say, please, Ishfa lana, intercede for us for the judgment to begin. I will call out on that day and say, Ana laha, ana laha. He says, Thumma asjudu li rabbi sajda. I prostrate to my Lord such a prostration so prolonged only Allah knows how long Masha Allah and Asjud as long as Allah wills for me to make sujood and I call out to Allah in such a dua that I've never called out before in my life I've never used these words in praising him and calling out to him in my sujood and then my ummah who followed me they will prostrate behind me a caller will call out prostrate down to your Lord. Allah says in the Quran, on that day, a saq will be revealed. What is this saq? What is the true nature of this saq? Allah only knows. In Muslim, the book of Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ says, my Lord reveals his saq. Only Allah knows the nature of this saq. There is nothing like unto him, and he hears all things and sees all things. So we will not dwell into the description of this reality called as -Saq. The Muslims, the, the believers will see it and then they will be called to prostrate. So then, bi'ithnillah, we prostrate. Except for the hypocrites. Allah says, فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ They will not be able to prostrate and the disbelievers will not be able to prostrate. As for the Prophet ﷺ and his ummah who are still prostrating, the hadith says, فِي ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمْ يَنزِلُ اللَّهِ on that day, Allah will descend. How will he descend? What does descending mean? Only Allah knows the nature of this descension. And Allah says in the Quran, on that day, your Lord and his angels will come. The angels in line like soldiers. And Allah's throne will be brought. What does this throne look like? Only Allah knows. But it will be brought and there will be eight angels carrying Allah's throne. These angels, the description came in the hadith that they are so humongous that it will take 300 years journey for a person to reach between the shoulder and the earlobe. They look in that nature. What the earlobe looks like, Allah knows. What the shoulder looks like, Allah knows. But the point is these angels are humongous. Eight of them carrying Allah's throne. The Prophet ﷺ said, the sky, the worldly sky, this universe that we see, compared to the second sky, because there are seven skies Allah created, is like a ring thrown into the desert. And the second compared to the third is like a ring thrown into the desert. And the third compared to the th fourth is like a ring thrown into a desert. And so on, until you reach the seventh. And the seventh compared to the arsh, to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is like a drop, in one hadith, like a drop in the ocean. And there is Allah's kursi, which is above the throne. And the kursi encompasses the whole skies and the earth. It's even larger than the arsh, than the throne. That will be brought on the day of judgment. And then Allah will say, Ya Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Irfa' ra'sak, lift your head. Was'al tu'ata, and ask for anything, I will give you. Then the Prophet ﷺ lifts his head. And the only thing he will say is, Ya Rabbi, Ummati, Ummati. O oh my Lord, save my nation, save my nation. The Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. And he will know them. Al Rasul ﷺ will know his Ummah which he interceded for. How will he know them? When the Prophet ﷺ was saying, I will be awaiting for you at the Hawd, he said, Follow my Sunnah and stick to it. What I am on and my companions stick to it and I will be waiting for you there and I will call you 
and say, come and drink from the fountain. شَرْبَةً هَنِيئَةً مَرِيئَةً لَا يَظْمَأُ بَعْدَهَا أَبَدًا Prophet ﷺ said, you will drink from it. A drink that you will never, ever be thirsty after that again. Thirst as in the quenching of thirst which brings you to fatigue. That's the thirst we're talking about. You will never be thirsty like that ever again. And you will enjoy it. This fountain on the day of judgment, he says, it will be colored like milk. You'll say, this is like milk, but it's not like the milk of this earth. It will taste sweeter than honey, but not like the honey of this earth. And you will have cups of gold and silver. Some of the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, we ask Allah to let us drink from that. I mean, will drink by themselves. And some of them, the Prophet ﷺ will give them to drink from his blessed hand. Before the Prophet ﷺ died, he went to his final visit to the grave of the shuhada, of the martyrs, and to al baqiyah And he made dua for them, and then he said the following words. وَدَدْتُ أَلَّوْ رَأَيْتُ the only thing I will miss of not seeing is that I will die not seeing my brethren. And then Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulallah, awalasna nahnu bi ikhwanik. Are we not your brothers already? Look, we're here, you can see us. He said, Ya Abu Huraira, you are my companions. Yes, and you are my brothers. But the brethren I'm talking about, they, don't, they are not here. They are the ones who believed in me and followed me, but never saw me, never met me. We ask Allah that we are them. Ameen. He said, what will happen? He said, I'm going to meet them on the day of judgment and I will call them to drink from the fountain. He said, How will you know them and you have never seen them? He said, if I told you that a person had many horses and some of them were very black in color and among them there were horses that were striped with white on their faces and on their arms and on their legs and on their tails. And he said, well, isn't he able to tell the difference between these horses and those? He said, yes, very easy. He said, on a day of judgment, my ummah will come to me muhajjalin. They will come striped with nur, brightness, nur on their faces. This is what it meant. It means on their faces and on their arms and on their legs. How did I know this? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, وَذَلِكَ مِنْ أَثَرِ الْوُضُوءِ This is because the effect of the wudu they used to make. What does that mean? It means they used to pray. They used to prepare for prayer. They were purified by making wudu. إِسْبَاغِ الْوُضُوءِ He said, إِسْبَاغِ الْوُضُوءِ They used to not only make wudu, they used to make their wudu proper. So they would go a little bit beyond their knees, their elbows, a little bit beyond their ankles. Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu said, after that day, everyone I saw, I used to say to them, whoever wants to drink from the fountain of the Prophet ﷺ, extend your wudu. Like, make it better. Make it better. Or do it like the way Bilal radiallahu anhu used to make it. Before every prayer, he used to make wudu, whether he still had it or didn't. There will be people whom the Prophet ﷺ, when he intercedes for them, they will be turned away from the fountain. See, there will be angels standing there. And the people will rush to that fountain. They will see that this is salvation. So some of them will be prevented by the angels. And they will look like Prophet ﷺ will say, Are they from my ummah? And some of them the Prophet ﷺ used to know from this life. And you'll say, They are from my ummah. And Allah will say to him, They changed after you. They changed after you. Meaning they changed your sunnah after you the innovators the ones who apostated they changed and the prophet ﷺ will say sorrowness and depth of hellfire for those who changed my sunnah after me those who changed my way after me my brothers and sisters this is when at this point this is when the sky above us will be filled with darkness we look up and what do we see? We see our books, our records. Hmm. It's really long and it has a lot packed in it. 
Yeah, yeah. Currently, um, well, first I will start by saying, um, <laughs> this is not true. This is not true. And, and uh, I always say this, and it's something um, that we all know. Truth is a person. And these are all facts that are based on human economy. I can literally hearing this guy, you know, this is just human philosophy. Because there's no way um, Muhammad will intercede for people. Because first of all, we ask, have we asked ourselves the question, where is Muhammad now? Where is he? If 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 you if you say okay, um, he's somewhere, some place, waiting for his brethren to come and then to intercede for them. The Bible talks about the fact that to every man, it is appointed for them to die once, and after that death, judgment. After that death, judgment. The Bible said it. Mm -hmm. It is appointed for every man, and when I mean every man, every man born of a woman and a man. It is appointed that they die once, and after that death is judgment. So you can't actually tell me that there's uh, there's a possibility of Muhammad interceding for people. And, and this the, was written in the Quran. Yes. Okay, written in the Quran. Okay, and then also talking about um, Jesus. <laughs> oh no, the Bible talks about the Father. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the means to the Father. Now, if we if we study, let's come up to Acts one. Let's just read Acts one. There's something that I want us to see. Let's let's read um, from verse nine. And when he had spoken these things, why they beheld, he was he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their out of their sight. And why they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white. Here. Okay, now this is an account in the book of Acts after Jesus resurrected and he was going to heaven. He was ascending. He was, he was ascending. Yeah. And then go on with the verse 11. Now, this, this verse 10 talks about this way, these two men were angels. Yeah. They stood by them in white apparel. Let's go on to 11. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, this same Jesus, uh, which, which is taking up, up from, from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as he as have seen him go into heaven. Into heaven. So it was the angels who were saying that. The angels were announcing that indeed this same Jesus ascending will descend again. Now, if you, if, I, I wish, I, I wish, I, I, if I came my Bible, I would have shown you this, this, I would have given you other references. That points to the other scripture that points to this particular passage. The same Jesus that ascended will descend again. But this time he's not going to um, descend for everyone. He's going to descend for some people. That's why in the new covenant, we believers, we Christians, they call us the bride of Christ. Because um, once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we come into a union, we come into um, a marriage. It's, called, it's, terms of, it's, it's given a term like marriage. And it's more like um, someone who has paid a bright price as a woman. Mm. That one is just left for him to, anytime he comes, to take you home. Because he has paid your bright price. So we are his bride. He has paid for us by dying for us. That's why they call us they call us his bride because he has died for that that debt that debt that he died is our, they call it is is like a dowry he has paid for us. So the same Jesus that ascended is the same Jesus that will descend. Now I was I was surprised to see that it's also written in their Quran. And this it like as a Christian seeing this for the first time like it's it messes with your hair like this is not what is being taught. Yes, and, yes. That is why Muslims can like are dedicated to the religion and also they really like Muhammad because they feel like he will be the one who's going to speak for them on judgment day. You see, that's 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 actually what they are told. But the, in reality, <laughs> the man himself is waiting for judgment. You understand? Mm -hmm. The man himself is going to be judged. 
So we are all, it's more like um, the person who is supposed to be, who you are saying is going to be my lawyer, is also a culprit in the, in the situation. How do, how do you say the lawyer who is also uh, part of the case, who is also a culprit in the case, is going to stand for you? So every man, we, we, we answer to this judgment. Even Muhammad will answer to it. Okay. So, I get. Over here they were saying, um, Ad, um, is it Adam? Yeah, Adam, Noah, Abraham, and some other, they said other prophets. Other prophets. Came all down below. Because they were all men. So they, there's no way they can even. And meanwhile, after after the that's why the, um, the the coming of Christ is to give us a second chance. This coming of Christ to give humanity. Okay, so Adam fell when Adam sinned against God. A lot of things happened. Um, creation fell. Things went bad, and then God was finding a way to reconcile man back to Himself. Mm. And then God became flesh. In John one, He said, "And the Word became flesh." That's Jesus. He became flesh and dwelt among us. He came to dwell among us, to liberate us. So it's more like, they, even Philippians talks about it in this way that he was humiliated. He took on our position. Mm -hmm. you, you see, if you talk about heaven, there's so much glory, so much grandeur, so much splendor in heaven. And this God leaves everything and comes down to earth to become like us, to deliver us. Because the person that failed the person that brought man into captivity that brought man into this death was a man so he had to come as a man to liberate us it's a spiritual law and that's why it, when they notice that adam adam was created by god it wasn't through a human birth through human birth yeah. so that's why even when jesus had to come jesus had to come through a supernatural birth that's why joseph was forbidden from touching mary until jesus was born and when the angel appeared to her, he said, the child you are carrying is a child of the Holy Ghost. It's a child of God. It's a child that was put into you by God. Mm. So, and the angel, and they forbade Joseph from touching her. Because if he touched her, he would have corrupted the seed within her. Most of them, they do get this different pattern. Like, when we are always calling God, we are always calling Jesus. Uh, you see? We are always calling Jesus as our God. And uh, since we see that three, how we can... A God come in human form. So they're always like, they're liberating and arguing about it. Okay. So you see, I, 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 said it, I said it yesterday some time ago that you cannot use logic to judge a God that created logic. Mm, that's true. I remember that previous. Yes. You cannot use logic. So it's more like, um, I think somewhere in Isaiah, he talked about the Father. Can the clay tell the potter what do is that? So when we begin to ask certain questions about God, about God, about God, who was God, this was this God, it's more like you a clay, you are being made a clay, and then you are asking the potter who is making you, what are you doing? Sure. Yes. And so all these things are just meant to cause confusion. At the end of the day, which we eventually unfold, we will know who is on light, who is in light, and who is in darkness. Because at the end of the day, you discover that Jesus remains the only way. Because, he, I, I, in fact, the history proves this. History proves this. That Jesus was not born naturally. He was born through a supernatural birth. That's true. And that's why even when he died and resurrected, the Pharisees were finding ways to actually keep every evidence. Sure. Because the, the guy's life was just too unique. The Pharisees were living by the laws. This guy just comes. He doesn't need to read any book. He begins to tell them it, how they should live their life. How they should live and order. And they can say, I am the father are one. And they begin to And then they are confused. Because why? They were all schooled by the law. They, more like how we have a lot of philosophers. They just read the Bible. But the spirit of the Bible is not in them. Then, the Pharisees were like that. That one is true. It's not just about reading the book itself. There's there's power in the book. There's power. That is that's what some people don't. Oh, there's no, no, there's no. power in the book itself. Like when you dwell in it, you receive that you you know something changes. Something, life. something life comes on you inside you. Yes. It's not just reading throughout throughout. That's why I always complain about um you see Dr. Ahmed did that. Like yeah. he read the books, but he don't I don't know how I put it. If it dwells in it, like 
Don't just take it like a normal book you are reading through. There's, there's power in the book itself. That's why the Bible is the most is the, is the most outly, is the most strongest um, weapon in the entire universe. You go to if you if you if you go to a a, um, a, a, a mall or anywhere and then you drop the Bible, everybody turns to look at you. The Bible is that powerful. It's so sacred. The power in it cannot be unfolded if you come with these human ideologies because this is God's wisdom here. You cannot use your human wisdom to understand God's wisdom. It has to be a divine help to understand God's wisdom. So that's what it is. True. Guys, it's how we answer the prophet on judgment day. I think the, the time you um this is we cover we have to do as well. Like, the same thing we're saying. Like there is no way you tell me um Noah will be there, you go to this person and this what person time do you have in eternity to go to Noah? <sighs> That is what baffles me. In eternity, there's, in fact, eternity is timeless. So what time do you want to be used to? What, who, what will give you that grace to be going through all those people? Who will be waiting for you to go through all those people to actually ask them to help you to forgive? Is there time for that? You just know that some of these things, they are not... Look at it. Just even let's come as human. Look at it. In eternity, somebody who is... Who is... <laughs> who hell is waiting for? Then it's not going through all... You read in, in the book of John... In, in, the, in the Gospels, where they talk about the story of Lazarus and the rich man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You remember that story? True. Yeah, I remember it. Where he it was like, if um, Lazarus can give a dip, dip hand into the water and give him a drop in hell. That's if, 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 if Abraham could help him, why didn't he? Why didn't he beg Abraham? But yet he was saying, yeah, all that prophets, all that prophets. That's true, that's why did they? Why did they make reference to it? It's true. But rather, he was saying he just needs water to drop on his tongue. Mm. And then he was even saying that, I know right now I'm beyond salvation. Any man that dies, there is no salvation for him again. Once you die, it's either your decisions, your decisions here on earth determines where you spend eternity. Mm. Either hell or heaven. It's not like you now, you're supposed to be death, you have, you have, you have lived anyhow on earth here, and then you, when you die, you have to, you have an opportunity to be, no, that's why earth is your, so far you have life, you have an opportunity to say yes to heaven or yes to hell. Sure. And remember that when the man didn't, was not even begging for his life, now he was begging that Abraham should send somebody to his family house to preach to them and tell them about, about heaven and hell. And Abraham said no. They have the prophets. The prophets are always telling them the truth. They are telling them what to do and what not to do. Sure. Guys, your question has been answered and this video has been checked out. So I believe it's all clear to you guys. They said they're going to have a next episode soon. So can't wait to check that out. Comment down below your thoughts and subscribe to our channel. Give us a like. Share this with as many as can, guys. Thank you, Pastor Salas, for coming. We'll see you guys on the next video. Make sure to stay safe. I just bought a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking, I don't own papers. Pass that 808, that dump, dump shaker. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging, I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales on.